hummingbirds love peanut butter. Ooh. It's Robbie and I'm home from the grocery store. No, just kidding. I took you to the grocery store to show you all the different peanut butter jars and different things you can get which in jars like this. What you want is a jar where the lid basically is the same size as the jar itself. That's the main thing you want to look for and you should be good to go with that. Why do the hummingbirds love my peanut butter? I'm going to show you why. This is so fun! You take a lid from the jar and wash the jar. Of course, eat your peanut butter, take the label off if you want, doesn't really matter. And then you end up with a nice, clean jar. Isn't that cool? Plastic. And you know what? I'll be honest with you, the softer the better. It's easier to work with. You take the lid off, and what I use here is a soldering iron. I like my soldering iron. I use it for making holes in my flower pots and everything. And now, all you're going to do, let me get up and show you so you can see it in the camera good. Yep. Is you're going to just make holes. Now you want two in the center. This is how I do it. Two next to each other in the center. See? Like that. And I'll show you why afterwards. And then go all the way around. Now this does smell a little bit to do, so you may want to do it outside, but my window's open, so we should be okay. Now if you've got Orioles in your area, then make some of the holes a little bit bigger. This way they'll feed out of it too. Right now this is perfect for hummingbirds. They actually can get into this size too, I have found out. But if you hold it there and slide it a little bit, so you can end up with larger holes. And maybe you want to make a couple of them a little larger. So you've got that now. So now there's your lid. Let me sit down. Okay, so now you've got your lid. And the other thing is, you want to cut the jar about an inch and a half from the bottom. And I do prefer scissors, but right now what I'm going to do is just start it. Since my soldering iron is hot. And I'm just going to start it. The reason I don't use the soldering iron so I haven't had luck with it. Let me put the soldering iron down. Um, it seems to make an edge on it, like a thick edge, and sometimes the cap won't fit. Now all you're going to do is cut it. It's that simple. Just cut it all the way around. Like I said, inch and a half. That it seems to work good. You don't want it too long, because if it's too deep, the jar, they won't be able to get to the food. So just cut it, you know, with the scissors, cut it all the way around. Don't worry if it's not perfect, because even when it's not perfect, they sit on the edges that aren't perfect. Okay, so now, now almost there. Okay, so now we're left with the bottom, which, um, or I should say the top. We don't need it. Just do whatever you want to do with it. And now we've got this, and you can clean it up if you want. If it's not, you know, really good, you can just clean it up a little bit. But now you've got the bottom. And now you've got the top. Now one more thing we have to do, and you can use wire if you've got wire, or everybody seems to have ties off of food from the grocery store. I use a bread tie, and you want to just um, put, put it through the two center holes, see? See the two center holes? Put it through the two center holes, and then twist it together really good. You go, why are you doing that? Well, you'll see why in a minute. And sometimes I twist it back on itself. So it kind of makes a knot. So you're kind of, probably can't even see what I'm doing. Just twist the wire really good. Okay, now what you've created is a little handle. And that's it. You're just going to put your lid inside that. Now, as you can see, let me show you, this one fits really good on here, and some jars are not created equal. So this fits really good. Now, if it doesn't fit, and you cut it, and it's a little snug, no worries. Look at this. What you do is you're going to snip just a little bit all the way around. It's 
hard to hold up and do the camera, but there it goes. You're going to snip it all the way around, just a little bit. Don't go all the way in the bottom. It'll defeat the purpose of keeping hummingbird food in there. But I'll show you all the way around. And then you end up with this, see? It flexes. Now, the cap will fit perfect in there. Look at that. You've got a hummingbird feeder. It didn't cost you anything. Only for the peanut butter that you were going to eat anyways. I have found some coconut oil and other foods come in the same type of jars, the same shape. Like I said, the main thing you want is the lid should be the same size or smaller than the jar itself. And if worse comes to worse, I have seen these party cups at parties where they use them and they're kind of a soft plastic. You could cut this down and use this instead of a lid. So you would cut it to look similar to a lid and you could use it. So if you ever go to a party and you see these cups, grab them because you can make hummingbird feeders out of them. And now, like I said, that is it. You've got yourself a hummingbird feeder. I've made a couple of them already. I've got them outside. And again, I can hear already people asking, what about the color? What about the color? You know what? They prefer the red, like hummingbirds usually do, but because they gravitate towards red and they check red out. They want to see what it is. But once they know what it is, they will go to any color. They're eating out of the blue ones, they're eating out of the brown ones, they're eating out of the gold looking ones. Uh, it, does, it won't matter that much. The thing is, they have to figure out what it is, it, you know, what this is. Once they find out what it is, it only takes one hummingbird to find out. Once they find out, then all of them copy them and they go and use the hummingbird feeder. And the Orioles, if you've got them in the area, they're really smart. They're intelligent birds too. And what they do is they follow the hummingbirds. And if they see the hummingbirds feeding on something, they go check it out. Well, I've got the Orioles that were outside. I'll show you the footage right here because I did some footage when I first put it out. And the hummingbirds are feeding and feeding. You can see them here. They're feeding and they're coming back and forth. But the Oriole, that's, he's got babies here. That's a male. It was amazing. He had no idea how to use it. He looked and looked. He looked underneath. He looked around it. He couldn't figure out. And he came and went and came and went. And, and finally he figured it out. Do you know that now once he figured out how to use this, he prefers this over the hummingbird feeders? And the reason is hummingbirds are little helicopters. So they go up and down and they land on whatever they need to land on and then they take off. Very dainty. When they're feeding off of something like this or any hummingbird feeder, they barely move the feeder because they land like a helicopter. Where an Oriole, they launch. They launch like an airplane. They need to take off. And when they launch, they flip the hummingbird feeder so they feel a little bit insecure sometimes as they launch off because they can't get the push. So it's a little harder for them to fly off. They do fine, but that, that push. But when this is sitting on a deck and they can just land and walk around the deck and then take off, they feel real comfortable. So by putting these out now, they're using these and they haven't even been using the feeders that much. They'll use the feeders when, the, when these are empty. It's so funny because they're more comfortable on landing and taking off. Let's go outside and let's see how good this works. And again, don't worry about color. If you can't get red ones, don't worry. But the other thing you could do also if you wanted to is you could paint this. If you're creative a little bit, and I'm sure a lot of you are, almost all of you are, doesn't take much. Paint a little yellow flower on the top, and then you can just paint it red, dots and different things, or paint a red flower if it's a blue one or a brown one or whatever, and then make the holes where the flowers are, and that's all you need to do. But don't forget to make the two center holes because it's really nice to have a handle that you can pull it out, because sometimes after it sits outside, it gets a little snug, and this way you've got something to easily pull it apart, wash it and clean this thing, fill it back up, and put the cap back on. Let's go see what the hummingbirds are doing outside with my peanut butter jars. This is just too cool. Hey guys, I think I saw a whole bunch of peanut butter jars in Gary's garage. I better go check that out.
So that's all there is to it in a matter of minutes. You've got yourself a hummingbird feeder. What fun. And look at the colors. They are beautiful. All you need is to make your hummingbird food, unless you're buying it. That's totally up to you. And you just put it out for them to see, and hopefully they will start coming. And once they find it, they'll use it. It couldn't be any easier than that. And I wanted to share this all with you because this has been so much fun. And... I'm so excited. I found a whole bunch more in Gary's garage. He wasn't here earlier. He had errands to run, but I just figured he wouldn't really mind. So I now have a whole bunch and I'm going to be able to put a whole bunch more in. Robbie. Robbie, where are all my peanut butter jars? Robbie? I have one for you. Where are all my peanut butter jars? Don't forget to eat what you grow and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. I better get his jars back to him. A couple of them.